In this lesson, we'll cover how to configure Motion AI, a highly coveted feature exclusive to the MV Extreme. Motion AI is the world's first AI-based motion interpolation integrated into a dedicated video processor, offering stunning realism and a highly addictive visual experience. Motion interpolation is a process of generating additional frames between existing ones to reduce motion blur and judder, which is particularly noticeable during fast camera pans. What sets Motion AI apart is its ability to preserve director's intent by counteracting exaggerated motion blur and judder caused by modern display technologies. For a deeper dive, see our white paper titled Understanding Motion Blur and Motion Artifacts in Modern Displays, on madvrmv.com. Unlike traditional motion interpolation, Motion AI allows for very granular control over the soap opera effect, offering settings ranging from extremely subtle to insanely smooth, catering to personal preferences. For instance, when viewing a concert filmed at 24 frames per second with Motion AI set to the highest strength, the experience is dramatically enhanced giving the sensation of sitting at the concert in the front row. The simplest way to enable Motion AI is by activating the Motion AI profile. If this profile is not available on your Envy, simply follow along the settings that we're working through in this lesson. Let's have a look at the Motion and Deinterlacing menu to explore the specific settings for Motion AI. First, ensure that the applet frame rate is set to Auto which is the default setting like you see here. The use Motion AI for content at 24p, which includes almost every movie and many concerts and documentaries, set the movies option to on. For the preferred frame rate, the choices are 60, 120, and 48p. If your display supports 120p, selecting this setting is recommended to reduce motion artifacts and use less processing power. This allows for more complex Motion AI models and running additional simultaneous MV algorithms. Note that using 120p requires high quality HDMI 2.1 cables rated at 48 gigabits per second. If you encounter any HDMI stability issues with this setting, consider switching the cable between your MV and the display or selecting a different preferred frame rate. If your display supports 48 but not 120p, Opting for 48 is usually preferable to 60p for the same reasons as just discussed. However, if neither 48p nor 120p is compatible, 60p is still a superb choice. Note that you may need to override the edit output in the NV HDMI menu to support 48p on your display. See our lesson on edit management for more information. Additionally, if you prefer the smoothest possible motion handling, Setting Motion AI to Insane at 60p provides a smoother experience than it will at 48 or 120p, except for Insane Plus, which requires an MV Mark II running at 120p. Set the model option to Auto, so the MV automatically chooses the optimal AI model, which will vary depending on factors such as your incoming and outgoing frame rates. In this case, you can see the MV has chosen the Dragon Mouth model. The look setting controls the strength of Motion AI. This includes options such as Cinematic, which is ideal for preserving director's intent, all the way up to Insane Plus, which provides for an extremely fluid appearance. Selecting the right look is a matter of personal preference, so experiment to see which setting best suits your taste. For sports enthusiasts, if your display supports 120p, set the sports option to on. This will enhance the clarity and fluidity of fast-moving sports action. This will output 50 and 60p content at 100 and 120p, respectively. Lastly, if using a Kaleidoscape, we recommend setting the Kaleidoscape option to on. This setting enables you to run the Kaleidoscape user interface at 24p instead of 60p, which can significantly reduce HDMI handshake times while keeping its menus and cover art animations silky smooth. To do this, you must configure your Kaleidoscape to use 24p for its user interface. See our previous lesson on setting up your source devices where we covered this. Note that even if you do not wish to use Motion AI for any movies, you can keep movies set to off and set the Kaleidoscape option to on 
to benefit from fast HMI handshakes when using the Kaleidoscape. Once configured, remember to save your settings to the base layer or to a profile. Now, after enabling Motion AI, it's a good idea to confirm that it's functioning as expected and that the incoming and outgoing frame rates matches what you expect, particularly the outgoing frame rate matches the preferred frame rate based on your configuration here. To verify, let's check the incoming and outgoing signal frame rates. Go to the incoming signal menu to confirm that the frame rate there meets your expectations. For movies, and when navigating in the Kaleidoscape menus, it should indicate 24p like it does here. If it shows 60p, revisit our previous lesson on setting up your source devices. For sports viewing, however, you would typically have an incoming frame rate of 50 or 60p. Next, let's check the outgoing frame rate on the outgoing signal information menu. As you can see, the outgoing frame rate here of 120p matches our preferred frame rate as set in the Motion AI menu. If your outgoing frame rate mirrors the incoming frame rate, this indicates that Motion AI is not active. Double check your settings in the Motion AI menu and the configuration of your source devices. When Motion AI is active, your outgoing frame rate will be higher than your incoming frame rate. After all, the whole point is to increase the outgoing frame rate from the original. However, we still need to check that the outgoing frame rate is what we expect. If when playing a movie, you find your outgoing frame rate is 60p, but your preferred frame rate is set to 48 or 120p, Motion AI is still active and beneficial, but not running at your desired frame rate. This will happen if your display is not accepting a 48 or 120p signal. In that case, your display may require a certain display setting to enable these frame rates, or it might require that you use a particular HDMI input port, such as input 3, for example. Another reason could be that the display is not advertising support for this resolution through its EDID. In that case, you may be able to use the option in the MB menu to override the HDMI output EDID as touched on earlier. Finally, if you're watching sports or content at 50 or 60p and have motion AI option on for sports, but the output frame rate is still 50 or 60p, ensure your preferred output frame rate is set to 120p and that your display supports this frame rate. Now, I mentioned earlier that the Envy makes it easy to compare different motion AI options. Your remote control buttons may already be programmed for these comparisons. Check the remote control settings in the menu to see if it's already configured this way. If not, you can program the buttons as explained here. We covered how to customize your remote in a previous lesson. To instantly toggle motion AI on and off, press the remote button assigned to the toggle motion AI action. This may already be set to green on your remote. To do A-B comparisons, watch fast moving content and camera pans and try toggling motion AI on and off every few seconds. The comparison simulates the look of 24p while remaining in the high frame rate, thereby allowing instant and side-by-side -side comparisons. There's also a remote control action called toggle motion AI split screen. This might be set to green press and hold on your unit. Use this to toggle between having the same content on the left and right with Motion AI active on the left side and off on the right. Toggle this again to change to a view of the full image with the left half with Motion AI on and the right half with it off. To turn off Motion AI split screen, toggle again until the split screen mode is deactivated. It's also very helpful to be able to quickly switch between different Motion AI strengths this is useful for both learning what look you like, as well as changing the look based on the content you're watching. For instance, you might put on an action movie and want to use a high strength, and later watch a classic movie on a lower strength. Or, likewise, you might want to watch a concert on the highest strength. Your Envy may already have a profile group called Motion AI Strength, making it easy to select different strengths from profiles. If so, your remote control may already be programmed to quickly switch between these strengths. In that case, a quick press of blue will choose the low strength, and press and hold blue will take it up a notch to balance, with a quick press of yellow taking it up to high, and press and hold of yellow taking it up to insane. 
To use Cinematic or Insane Plus, you'll need to configure those in the Remote Control Configuration menu or change the settings in the menu. You can also check the Remote Control menu configuration to see exactly which buttons are assigned to these actions. If your MV is not already set this way, you can easily create a similar profile and remote control button assignments. See the lessons on customizing the MV remote and creating profiles for more information. Okay, now that we covered how to configure Motion AI and manage its settings effectively, it's time to move on to our next lesson.